Brown and Earl. Okay. Are we ready? Thank you. Yep. The you know, <laughs> okay. We are so good. Yeah. We are. Is it square? It is. Thank you, Jesus. We Thank get you, this. Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are so wonderful. I thank you. You know, when I came in this morning, I said, Doug, do you know that song, Holy Spirit? You're welcome in this place. He said, well, I'm doing a song, Holy Spirit. But you know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to sing it. Because we have the Holy Spirit. Yes, we do. But we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. We want to make the Holy Spirit Lord in our life yes, exactly. and submit to the Holy Spirit. That's right. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Magnificent Father, of glory and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you're our teacher. Lead us, Lord. Oh, and press upon each and every heart that will hear this message. Abundance of grace, your divine influence upon our hearts, yes, that our hearts will be persuaded yes. of your goodness you. toward us and of your great love. Yes, Amen. Amen. You know, I got loads of word here. And I finished it yesterday and I sent it off to Jan. How many of you believe the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord? That's right. Amen. Amen. He directs us. Yes, he does. And when I got up this morning, it's so funny. When I got up this morning, I said to my husband, Jim, read Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. I'm just going to go there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Yes, he has. This is Christ-centric. This is nothing about what you do. It's all about what he did before the foundation of the world. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. And I said, you see that, Jimmy? It's not about us. No, it's all about what God has done. Do you know, the scripture tells us that Jesus was the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. So when was Jesus slain? Before the foundation of the world. But he came into time and he witnessed to what was already done. Let your head get wrapped around this, okay? Now, we were chosen before the foundation of the world, okay? So when was we chosen? Was we chosen when we accepted Christ and said a prayer? No, we were chosen before the world ever began. Now, we are a witness in time of what God did before time ever began. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. So then I'm in this lovely,
Christ-centric mode of thinking of the goodness of God. And then I saw something, and it said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. It's a choice. You choose. And it just grieved me. Because you see, if you read that in that mindset where you've got a choice, it's all about you. It's not about what God did. When I see, be ye holy for I am holy, is all I know is, listen, whatever he is, I am because he made me in his image. Yeah. It's not about my trying. Glory to God. I mean, if I've got to make myself holy, I'm up the creek. Amen? But he did it. He did it. He made me accept it. Hallelujah. And just the fact that you have the Holy Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit of adoption. If you've got the Holy Spirit living in you, it's, it's sonship. It's the witness of sonship. You're already in, baby. That's it. Hallelujah. And so when my heart was grieved, then I went to the scripture in Galatians 4. And this is not part of my message. This is just what the Lord gave me this morning. And the thing is this. The scripture says uh, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That means the word that's coming out of his mouth right now. So, I mean, he said good stuff to me yesterday, but if he says something today, that's the word I'm going with. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. And this is so good, hallelujah. Galatians. Or verse 21. And let, let me just stop. You hear a lot of the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over. Uh -huh. Because you know why? We were tormented by the lie over and over and over. And we need to have our hearts washed with the water of the word so that we never, ever have a slightest inkling or thought of condemnation. If we still feel that prick, we've not been washed enough by the washing of the gospel. Amen. It says, in verse 21 of chapter 4 of Galatians, tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise which things are an allegory, but these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Hagar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. Jerusalem is still in bondage to the law. For it is written, but oh wait, but Jerusalem, which is from above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that beareth not, bring forth and cry thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. But as then, see, he's saying, right now, we're children of the promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. 
Even so it is now. It's still going on right now. Listen, if you have been born again from above and your heart is singing, guess what? The carnal mind is an enemy of that thing. The law was Lord under the old covenant. And what was the child of the law? What was the child that Hagar brought forth? The child of self-effort. Ishmael was born of self-effort. And whenever you hear that in your mind, you should be doing this or you should be doing that, guess what? It's Ishmael tormenting Isaac. Remember on the day that Isaac was weaned, Ishmael was taunting him. And what did Sarah say? Cast out the bondwoman and her child. It says, but as then it is now, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. Cast out the law and its child self-effort. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Both children had Abraham as their father, the father of faith. But the bondwoman represented the law. Sarah represented the free woman, the woman where we were going to receive the promise of the spirit. We have been tormented too many years with the voice of Ishmael. Many Christians don't know what it's like to be free from that voice. It's torment. We have lived with Ishmael for so long. And he says it's time to cast it out and live with Isaac. You know what Isaac means? Son of laughter. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh my goodness. When you're tormented by the voice of Ishmael, oh, you gotta try harder, you gotta do more. It is such bondage, it's such misery. The Lord wants us to enter in to the realm of his spirit where only what he says is the truth. Yes. And you will be a child of promise yes. and you will inherit the laughter. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, I know I've said this before, but the Lord has brought it to me this morning. I love these two pictures in the book of uh, Psalms, okay? And this is the picture. This is the picture of captivity and freedom. Captivity, when the children of Israel were taken into bondage, into Babylon. The psalmist said this, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat, yea, we wept, and we remembered Zion. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. For they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required us mirth, saying, Sing one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can I sing a song unto the Lord when I'm in captivity? 
It's for freedom Christ set us free. It's from freedom from the carnal mind and all your self-effort to come into that land of freedom. Now, in Psalm 126, this is so beautiful. This is the picture of Ishmael, torment, captivity, and Isaac, full of laughter. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like men that dream. Have you ever been so happy and you're dreaming? <laughs> and you wake up and you find out what you was experiencing really wasn't real, but you sure was enjoying yourself? That's what he's saying. He's saying when the Lord reverses your captivity, you're like men that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. You hear that? The heathen are saying, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Set us free, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now. So many of you maybe watched a Zoom from a couple of weeks ago where I shared this testimony. And uh, it's so funny because on the morning of the seventh of this month, and it's so funny because anybody that knows me knows seven is my number. I'm the seventh daughter born on the seventh day of the seventh month in the year 1952. I was born again in 1977, and I moved to Conway, South Carolina on September 7, 19, uh, 2017, okay? So I went to bed on the 6th as a man, as a human, and I woke up on the 7th with the mind of Christ. And there was something different. Something had happened to me while I was asleep. And I got up in the morning, and I was so different. And I said to my husband, I said, Jimmy, I went to bed as a human, and I woke up with the mind of Christ. Now, I don't know how it happened. And he said, what difference does it make? I said, well, as a teacher, I want to be able to teach people how I got there, okay? But I said, I feel like the guy uh, in Mark 4, it says Jesus also told them a parable. God's kingdom realm is like someone spreading seed on the ground. He goes to bed and gets up day after day, and the seed sprouts and grows tall, though he knows not how. I mean, how did this thing happen? Then the head, then the stalk, then the fully developed brain in the head. That's how it grows. The seed is in us, and it just grows. But the reason this happened is because I have been washing myself in the Word. I have been listening and listening and listening to how much the Father loves me. And I've shared this testimony with you before. How that when I was five, I was abducted. And I was taken by a wicked man. And I don't remember what happened. It's all I remember is the hot tears rolling down my face as he brought me to my door. 
And years ago, when we had the church, the abiding place, we had a prophet come from uh, Martha's Vineyard. And he was giving his testimony, a wonderful, wonderful man of God. And he was a black man. And he was, his mom founded the church in Anchor Town on Martha's Vineyard. And he was telling how these six white men abducted him and raped him, one after another. And he said, while it was going on, I'm saying, God, where are you? Why aren't you stopping this? And when he was finished, I said to him, I said, you know, I can really relate to what you said because when I was five, I was abducted. And he said, I know. He said, but you still smell of smoke. And I was so angry. He said, that's why you don't let anybody do anything. You've got to be in control. Because when you were a child, you were not in control. And you got hurt. And now you don't want to be hurt again. So you put up walls. And you control everything. I was spitting mad. And I didn't say anything. But it was the truth. And what he was talking about, those Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, when they came out, the only thing that was burned was the ropes that tied them, that they didn't smell of smoke. And we go through traumas in our life, and there's a residue that we carry from that trauma. And God wants to heal us. Yeah. And so I never really gave control to the Holy Spirit. But that week, my heart was persuaded that my Heavenly Father loves me. And he's given us his Holy Spirit to lead us into such freedom that we've never known. But as long as we're holding on, we're not trusting him. And sometime during that night, it happened. And I, you know, and I said, Holy Spirit, I want you to be Lord of my life. Because the scripture says, you know, it says we have received the spirit of adoption where we cry out, Abba, Father. And no matter where you are in your walk, you're a child of God. Yes. You're a child of God. Yes. But you know what? The scripture says, as many as are led by the spirit, these are the sons of God. That is a different word. Child is an infant. Son is a full, mature person. Mature. Mature is when you have grown into the love of God so much that you let go. And you say, I'm setting my sail. And I'm going to let him blow me wherever he wants to blow me. Because I know it's going to be a good place. So many times we end up in messes. It's because we go where the Holy Spirit didn't lead us. Right. He never leads us into a mess. No. It's always good. Even if it's challenging, it's still going to be good. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, so many times we go our own way and then turn around and say, God, why did you let this happen to me? Hello. Why didn't you listen to me? Hallelujah. This is so good. I feel like a brand new person. 
I always felt free, but I'm even freer now. Amen? Yes. You know, you'll never be more righteous than what you are right now. Righteousness does not come incrementally. You don't grow in righteousness. You're as righteous as God is. He gave you the gift of God, which is very own righteousness. But you can grow in the revelation of how righteous you are. But freedom, on the other hand, is incremental. As you allow the Holy Spirit to really take control, you get freer and freer. You know, the Lord told the Israelites when they came into the land of Canaan, destroy all the enemy. Don't save any of them. Because if you do, they will be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side. Yes. Okay? Do you know, remember Saul, Agag, the king of the Amalekites? Do you know Haman, the one that persecuted Esther and Haman, uh, Esther and Mordecai, was a descendant of Agag? The word of the Lord is true. Let the Lord wipe out all darkness. Yes. Anything in us that tries to hide. Because you see, it's an enemy. It's an enemy. And it will hurt us. That's right. Amen. You know, the scripture in first John says. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Yes, we do. You notice all that saying is, if we walk in the same perspective as what God the Father has toward us, we'll never have any problem with one another. Amen? Because right. we'll all esteem one another above ourselves. That's right. This is good. I don't know if you're enjoying it, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because I feel like, you know, we constantly, we have different seasons in our life where God's bringing up, he'll bring you into a green pasture where you've never grazed before. And it's like, wow, this is so good, amen? And you see, the fruit of it in your life because as you eat that word, you're being transformed and set free. And uh, the way that salvation has been taught, I mean, it's so ridiculous. It just makes me shudder to think that I ever believed that way. But you know what? We've come a long way, baby. Amen? Amen. But it used to be taught as Postmortem ecstasy. You'll get it when you die. That was never what Jesus preached. Jesus said, this is eternal life, that you may know the only true God, even Jesus Christ whom he sent. This is what eternal life is. It's union. It's oneness. It's experiencing the very life of God, not in the sweet by and by, but right now. Amen. Yes. And in John 1, 1, it says, in, and it's so funny because Pastor Rick preached so much of this last week. But you know what? You got to hear it and hear it and hear it because it's not analytical. It's not brain that needs to, to get it. It's the heart. Yes. And when the heart is so full of it, and the heart meditates on it, and the heart speaks out what is in it, it renews the mind. And we need the mind renewed. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 
In John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That word with is pros, face to face. He was face to face with God. Yes, he was. The Trinitarian fellowship is mutual indwelling without the loss of personhood. They indwell one another, but they're, they have their own personhood. The early church fathers called this perichoresis. Perichoresis, and it's from the Greek word rotation. is a term referring to the relationship of the three persons of the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit to one another. Peri comes from the word about or around, circle. Where we get peri, perimeter, or periscope, and choresis, is where we get the word choreography, dance. It's the circle dance. It's the Father loving the Son, the Son loving the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit loving the Father. And out of this union of love was spawned humanity. How beautiful is that? In act, 1726, Rick read this last week. He hath of one blood of all nations of men made us to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if aptly they may feel after him and find him though he not be far from any one of us. Yeah. For in him, we live. Now, he's not saying to them, in him you live, you're living. He's saying you need to seek the Lord because in him you live. That's right. In the circle dance, you live. In that face-to-face -face communion, you live yes. and move and have your being. You're not really fully alive. That's right. Come on. Unless you're in him. Yeah. Amen. You know, the Westminster Catechism said, what is the glory of God? The glory of God is man fully alive. Fully alive. Spirit, soul, and body in God. Yes. We're not living if we're not living face to face. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, for we are his offspring. In him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. That word offspring is genus. You got the same genes as God. The same Kind, kindred, race, family, stock, same nature. Wow, that was a big mosquito. <laughs> it was out to get me. Hallelujah. Um, but listen, in the fall, the image of God was darkened. Therefore, the likeness of God in man was lost. Face to face, man was created to be face to face with God. Just as the moon cannot be seen without the sun, man was made to reflect the glory of God. But the glory God's goodness was eclipsed by a lie. 
You see what happens if something comes between the sun and the moon? There's darkness. You can only reflect the glory of your Father as you see the true image of the glory of God. Amen. But the carnal mind made God an enemy of man. God was never our enemy. In Genesis 3, 4, it says, And the serpent said to the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now God said they would. And he said, you won't. So that's a lie. For God does know in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you'll be as gods. They were already like God. They believed the lie that God was holding out on them. Therefore, they did not believe God loved them. And the lie became their reality. The true image of God was darkened. And that lie has been propagated for centuries through religion. So sad. Jesus said in Luke 19.10, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. What was lost? The image of God. Jesus came to declare the goodness of his Father. Yes. To bring back the true image of God so that we could see him and be changed into the same image yes. by the power of his spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. In John 1.18, Jesus, uh, John said, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Jesus came to reveal, to unfold the true nature of God that we could see him as a good, good father. He says in Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27, all things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knoweth the son but the father, neither knoweth any man the father save the son, and he to whom the son will reveal him. Yes. So you can't know the father without the son. And Romans 1.16 says, For I am not now. This happened to me Thursday morning. Thursday morning. You know, I find that when I surrender to the Holy Spirit and I just want to hear the word and I just suck him up all day long, I find that even when I go to bed, he's not finished, and he keeps going, you know what I mean? That be beats having lousy nightmares about something that you watched the night before that's totally contrary to your spirit. And so Thursday morning, it was two o'clock, I woke up with the righteousness of God for an Paul said it in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That word salvation, sotoria, is total wholeness. We're growing into whole. It's like we're completing Christ, okay? We're already there, but we're not. We've already got it all on the inside, but we haven't experienced the fullness of this wholeness yet, amen? Right. Yeah. We got it all, but it's a revelation through the word that it gets revealed and uncovered. Hallelujah. You know, uh, that Holy Spirit, he just loves to take me here and there. You know, the merchant, 
the merchant that found the treasure hidden in the field, he was mesmerized. He was mesmerized with that treasure to the point that he says, I'm selling everything I got and I'm going to purchase that field. You know, that merchant is Jesus and you're the treasure. Yes. And he was mesmerized with you even when you were covered with dirt. But you know what? The Holy Spirit is unearthing the treasure that is in us. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. What is glory? It's, it's not only God's good view and opinion of you. It's brilliance. It's splendor. It's like, wow. You know, the scripture says in 1 John 3, behold, that word behold means get fixated on, gaze, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Yes. That we are now, not some future day, now are we the children of God. But it doesn't yet appear. It's not yet revealed what we shall be. I mean, we might be shining right now, but it ain't nothing like we're going to shine. But we know when we see him, when he's revealed to us. Now, that don't mean to say you got to die to see Jesus. Amen? Right. Right. But as you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to you, then you are changed into the same image. Just like him. It says, for well, we shall see him. We will be like him because we shall see him as he is. You hear that? Yeah. There's no self-effort there. No. no, you're gonna be like him, exactly like him, when you really see who he really is. Come on. And that makes me go, oh, Holy Spirit, turn me inside out, upside down, but I want to see the face of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. It says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. You've got to believe it. That's right. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to convince your heart that this is true. Yes, amen. For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith, ek, the origin of faith, what God believes, to your little old heart. The gospel has the power to convey what's in God's heart to your heart. Hallelujah. Righteousness is innocence, faultless, guiltless, the state of one as he ought to be. Yes. Do you know what? The gospel is the good news about who God truly is. He's a good, good father. Yes, and the gospel is the truth of who you really are. It's unveiling your true identity. You, are, you have forgotten the rock from which you were hewn. You came from God. Yes. In Romans 10, 5, it says, For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Thank God I'm not under the law. Hallelujah. You know, you have to realize something. There's only two kinds of righteousness. There's the righteousness of God yes. that you receive by faith, which is the exact same righteousness as God is, or self-righteousness, yeah. which is as filthy rags. Yes. Okay? Now, you're not somewhere in between. And you know, when I share with people 
that they are as righteous as God is, they kind of like get uncomfortable. And they're like, well, you know, uh, I can't say that. See, what they're, they're doing is they're looking at their behavior and they're judging what God said is not true. Let God be true when every man is a liar. Amen. It's not about our words. It's about the free gift. And you've got to hear this and hear this and hear this. So when somebody declares to you, hey, sister, brother, do you know you are as righteous as God is? Yeah. You'll go, hey, amen. amen. I'm glad you, can, you know that because I know that. But you see, if our heart is stinging us with that, we've really not fully been convinced that it's true. And you have to. You have to receive it. Because you, you've got to understand the day that you see him face to face, it's eyeball to eyeball, baby. And if you have any, if you had any less righteousness than him, you'd drop your eyes. You'd feel ashamed. That's no part of the circle of dance, honey. No, <laughs> no way. No. no way. He created us to be in that circle yes. dance. Yes. Hallelujah. And when we really get it, when we really accept it, we're happy because we're free from the bond woman telling us we're not good enough. Right. Glory to God. We got to keep hearing it and hearing it. But the righteousness which, which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Don't say in your heart, who shall ascend to heaven to bring Christ down? Or he sh who shall descend into the deep to bring Christ up from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that, and shall believe in thy heart. You see, the believing goes in your heart. You don't believe with your mind. You believe with your heart, and then you allow your mind to be transformed by the Spirit yeah. to come into agreement with what your heart is rejoicing about. Let Amen. me tell you, your mind wants to rain on your parade. Amen? Amen. I mean, you can hear a message in your heart singing, Woo-hoo! I'm a child of God! Glory to God! And your mind goes, yeah, but look at what you did. <laughs> Hello! That's all got to be cast down. Throw that bum woman and her kid out of here. Amen. I'm a child of laughter. Glory to God. Amen. It says, it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Look at that. You, you can't earn righteousness. No. You can't make yourself righteous. No. You've got to believe it with your heart. You believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth salvation is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. Amen. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Not. Now listen, if there is any threat of shame or guilt in our heart, we're really not believing the finished work of Christ. Right. Then when he said it's finished, it's finished. Listen to this. In Romans 4, 6, David uh, said this in the psalm. When P and this is from the Passion Translation. When people work, they earn wages. It can't be considered a free gift because they earned it. But no one earns God's righteousness. It can only be transferred when we no longer rely on our own works, but believe in the one who powerfully declares the ungodly to be righteous in his eyes. Amen. 
It is faith that transfers God's righteousness into your account. I mean, here's the free gift of righteousness. The only thing standing between a person receiving that gift and it staying with God is they got to believe it. That's it. And glory to God when your heart believes it. Yeah. Do we really believe it? Yes, amen. I mean, every day I'm believing it more and more. Glory to God. It says even King David himself speaks to us regarding the complete wholeness that comes inside a person when God's powerful declaration of righteousness is heard over their life. It makes you whole. It's like, man, I've always wanted to be like Jesus, and I've tried, and I've been on the treadmill from hell for years, and now it's just plopped right in my lap, and I didn't have to do a cotton-picking thing to earn it. That's the goodness of God. That when you hear the powerful declaration, let me start again. Even King David himself speaks to us regarding the complete wholeness that comes inside a person when God's powerful declaration of righteousness is heard over our life. Apart from our works, God's work is enough. Here's what David says. What happy fulfillment is ahead for all those whose rebellion has been forgiven yeah. and whose sins are covered by the blood. What happy progress comes to them when they hear the Lord speak over them. I will never hold your sins against you. Amen. It's time for us to confess what God confesses. Yes. That word confess is homologeo. And it means to say the same thing as the word. Yes. God don't want to hear about your misery. He don't want to hear about your mistakes. He's like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Why are you bringing that up to me? That is not in my mind. I have taken your sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west. Now I advise you to do the same thing. Yes, amen. amen. Glory to God. Remember the story of Simon the Pharisee in Luke 7, 36? Jesus said, this is the story where the woman who, she had a rep, she had a reputation, came in, was crying, washing Jesus' feet with her tears, wiping them with her hair. And Simon the Pharisee said, hmm, if he was a prophet, he'd know what kind of woman this is. And Jesus said, Simon, let me ask you something. There were two people that owed money, 150 pence, one 500, and the master forgave them both. Which one suppose you loved him the most? He said, the one that owed the most. He says, you spoke truly. He said, this woman whose sins were many have been forgiven, therefore she loves much. And you know, Jesus is not saying this woman's sins are greater than your sins, Simon. She just happens to know all of her sins are forgiven. Happy is the man that knows his sins are forgiven. Amen. That's me. They've been taken away. Yeah. Happy is that man. If you're still carrying baggage of, oh, I did this and I did that, you're not a happy man. No. You're not living as a child of the promise having laughter. You're still being tormented by Ishmael. And God wants to eradicate that little brat right out of your life. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, Simon, Simon was not a happy camper. He was a miserable soul. And he didn't know that his sins were forgiven. Hallelujah. Anybody that thinks that their sins are not forgiven, 
He's under a delusion. It's not the truth. And unless we agree with God, I mean, God, listen, I like God's life. I mean, God has a great life, amen? Yeah. And as Jesus came to represent the Father, we are here to represent Christ. I want Christ to be fully orbed in me that I can experience the life that he lived. Amen? Amen. And so I'll be a representation of the glorious life of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, I don't know when it was yesterday or today, or, but I was thinking about that bushel. No man light, lights a candle and puts it under a bushel. But he puts it on a lampstand. Do you know John 1 says, that Jesus is the light that lighteth every man that come into the world. Psalm says that the Spirit is the candle of the Lord. We've all got the light, but it's hidden by a bushel. But baby, when you let Jesus light that light, it's a light set on the hill. It's like a city. I mean, boy, I tell you what, when you're driving at nighttime and it's dark and there's nothing, and then all of a sudden you see light on the horizon, you see you're coming into a place. There's food there. We can stop. It's a, it, you can see it. Man, the Lord wants us to shine, not try to do better, but believe the gospel. Believe the truth of what God thinks about you. Your heavenly Father is mesmerized with you. And if your heart will believe that, baby, you will be shining like nobody's business. You will care less what anybody thinks of you. Glory to God, my heavenly Father thinks I'm the cat's meow. And if you don't like me, you don't see what God sees. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I should hope so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You've got to realize, okay, wherever we are at in this walk, okay, whether we be an infant, whether we be a toddler, whether we be a teenager or fully grown, you're good right where you are, okay? But you also... See, there is no condemnation in being a baby or a toddler or a teenager. But you are also living with what Romans 8.29 says. You are predestined. It's already been predetermined that you are going to be conformed to the image of his son. So there is something on the inside of us that wants to be like Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And, and this, is, this is the divine paradox. And I love this scripture in Psalm 63, 8. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholds me. Now wait a minute. Look at this. You've got this picture. His right hand holds me. It's like, it's like an embrace of a lover. I'm right there with you, Jesus. You've got me, and I've got you. But ah, my heart wants more. See, that's normal. It's like a little kid that's eight years old and they just can't wait to turn 16 so they can drive. It's not that they're hating where they're at, but they see something that they want to grow into. Amen? So you've got to, you've got to realize that there is a longing desire in us to grow up into the full stature. That's what the scripture tells us in Ephesians, that God gave his apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, 
till we all come into the full stature of the Son of God. Yes, amen. So we all want to grow up, but enjoy the ride. Enjoy right where you're at. Amen? Don't let the enemy bring condemnation in any, any area of your life because it will cripple you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, as Jesus came, Lord have mercy. I should be finishing. This is it. I'm on page four. I don't know what to do. What should I do? Should we quit? Should we stop? Yes, Michael? Michael says yes, stop. That's what we will do. And maybe Rick will let me finish this next week. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Good word. You know what my next word was? I have many things to say unto you. <laughs> but you can't bear them now. <laughs> Amen. That's my scripture. Hello. Isn't that something? I got many things to say, but you can't take it now. Hallelujah. Oh. Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you. Your word is so rich. Oh, my goodness. You know, as they pass out the elements, you know, that scripture, it's so funny. When we think we're there and then we realize, wow. In, in uh, 1 Corinthians 2, it says, As it is written, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it been conceived in the heart of man the things that God has in store for them that love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. And I used to think that was past. Yeah, it was written, but now the Holy Ghost has revealed it to us. And I thought it was already passed in my life. Well, guess what? Thank you. I still ain't seen it. There's so much more. Oh, wait until you hear the next part of this message, baby. It's going to bless your socks off. Amen. Hallelujah. Just let me leave you with this thought. We were created for perichoresis. We were created for the face-to-face -face dance. Yes. John said, I tell you these things that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. We're already in the dance. Now we want you to join us in the dance, and baby, when you do, your joy is going to be full. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. Amen. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, it's so my desire for people to get this. It's your desire for people to get this, Lord. Not striving, but just beholding the beauty yes. of who you truly are. Lord, it was revealed to us in the cross. How can anyone say, I don't believe God loves me? When you so loved every one of us, you gave your own son to die away our union with this sick death and sin and bring us into the freedom, the liberty of the children of God. We just give you praise, Lord. Amen. And Lord, we, we thank you for this cup that represents your blood. Mm. It is finished. And now we hand it over to the Holy Spirit to bring into reality your finished works yes. in our life. Yes. Thank you, Father.
Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can somebody turn that camera off? Thank you, Lord. I hope I put the camera the right way. <laughs> because if I didn't, it's upside down. And last time, it was a 